Welcome to our CA Football 12 Teams in 12 Days Season Preview. Today we take a look at the Elon Phoenix, and to help us do that, we're joined by the legendary play-by-play -play voice of the Elon <laughs> Phoenix, Taylor Durham. Good morning, Taylor. Mr. Washburn, always good to see you, and I guess it if uh, we're visiting in the 1st of August, it means that we're right around the corner from a uh, early September Saturday. Exactly right. <laughs> Let's take a look back at last spring. A 1-5 in five record for Elon dealt with an awful lot of injuries and played yeah. an awful lot of different guys. Is there anything that they could take from that spring that maybe will help them this fall? I think that you look at, Rob, I think you look at the opportunity that some of the younger guys got. Uh, a name like Bryce Graves jumps out. Uh, some of the guys as well on uh, the defensive back end, a guy like Antonio White, um, Dylan Tucker, guys who I don't want to ever say were forced into an opportunity because of the circumstances, but certainly saw more snaps because of the circumstances. And uh, then I think the improvement of a guy like a, like a J.R. Martin um, because of the circumstances with Davis getting hurt in the preseason and then Joey Boffman getting hurt at Gardner Webb. Uh, you were able to get some experience, uh, game experience for an offensive line that uh, was still trying to find the replacements for guys who had been veteran guys in the two playoff runs of Higgins and Too Good and Udo and others. Um, and so I think there's positives to pull and then uh, get back into where they're in full health and ready to go come September 4th when Wofford visits. Let's start with a look at the offense. And, and when you look at that Judy Heap, there's certainly plenty of familiar names, guys who have played a lot of football, Davis Cheek, Cortez Weeks, Jalen Thomas, just to, to mention a few with that improved offensive line that you touched on. Give us your breakdown of the offense. Well, let's start with it's awfully nice to have the senior from Matthews back. Uh, his 30th start will be against Wofford. Uh, 17 wins to his Elon credit. Rob, the most important and impressive number to me is that eight of those wins have come against teams ranked in the top 25. So Davis has been in big moments. Uh, he's had success in big moments. And he's also got those veteran skill guys. And you mentioned Thomas and Weeks. Jackson Parham being another. Those three guys collectively have started 56 ball games between them. Uh, and so having that veteran presence offensively on the outside and at the back spot. And then Donovan Williams was having a really good spring. Uh, the transfer from out of UConn. Um, he was having the type of spring uh, that was really going to be a factor offensively and then got hurt. Um, one of the several that it spent some time on the injury list last spring, uh, but having that type of presence as well, uh, um, much like a Matt Foster was for Davis in his first three years. Defensively, some familiar names up front with Tristan Cox and Torin Williams, and then some exciting young players in the back end, especially uh, with Cole Coleman. Give us a read on, uh, on, on the defense and some of the guys that you expect to step up on that side of the ball. Well, hopefully everything holds – true health-wise, and you knock on wood, you do whatever you want to do, but if Tristan Cox starts every regular season game, he will close his Elon years having started 51 straight games. Tristan has been a fixture in that three-man front since he walked on campus. Uh, you mentioned Torrance Williams, and he was really good um, at spots last year and certainly has become a factor uh, replacing Marcus Willoughby, who was a factor in his last two years. And then Marvin Pearson up front, um, those three up front. And then one of the things that Rob, you mentioned the spring. And I think one of the things that Elon felt really good about is, is that they were able to, they were able to get a look at some of the depth up front defensively, um, and start to figure out kind of moving guys around and moving guys in spots. And so hopefully that'll pay dividends and then at the linebacker court Devontae Chandler um, you get Malone back um, Bryce Graves who uh, was just a tackling guy in the spring uh, Trey Allsbrooks as well and then of course you you mentioned the name and Cole Coleman um, an all-conference choice um, really a guy who has a unique understanding of the bandit role that they're asking him to play in this 3-3-5. Three, three, 
and a guy who has uh, just been a really linchpin guy in this defense. Let's touch a little bit on special teams, a veteran kicker back and a reliable guy in Skylar Davis. And then Trayvon Jones uh, got some all-conference recognition as a returner. What do you like about the special team? Well, I like those two names a lot. Skylar Davis is uh, Skylar Davis is a guy that is uh, much like Tristan Cox and, and uh, Davis Cheek. Skylar's a veteran guy in this group. And then Trayvon Jones has been a guy that's just made plays. Uh, you think back to the regular season finale, in 19 at Towson, Trayvon Jones with an interception that kind of started the comeback. Uh, he also made big plays throughout the afternoon. Uh, he's a guy that's gotten comfortable in the role that they've put him in uh, and has excelled with that comfort. I think most people would agree that uh, the Phoenix will likely finish a lot higher than they were predicted in the preseason poll. What are some of your keys for them to have some success this season? Well, I think that you got to take it one game at a time. And I know that sounds like coach speak 101, but with this schedule, uh, there's a challenge waiting at every turn. Wofford is a playoff ball club out of the Southern Conference, a team that Elon is very familiar with from their time, not only in the Southern Conference, but the last playoff game in 2018 that the Phoenix played was in Spartanburg. Luckily, the Terriers will be here. Labor Day weekend, but then a trip to Bowie's Creek. And Campbell is an improving ball club. A trip to Boone, September 18th, and then a conference scheduler that gets jump started in late September. William and Mary here, and then a date with Richmond. And boy, the Spiders certainly look impressive in the spring. Sure do. Well, Taylor, thanks so much for uh, bringing us up to date on the Phoenix and look forward to catching up with you as the season goes along. Rob, it's always fantastic, man. Thank you. Thank you.